Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I hope to walk you through the principle of dynamic light scattering. I've been learning about this technique uh, for the past few days and I find it really challenging to understand. And therefore, I made this video, hopefully I could break it down to a more digestible and more clear way for you and to make this journey easier for you. So what is DLS? Well, it is a very common analytical technique used for measuring or analyzing the size of the particles in solution. It could cover size information ranging from nanometer to micrometer. The principle of the DLS has something to do with how light interacts with particles that are moving. So let's explore how light, motion, and a bit of math come together to reveal the size of the particles. Let's first understand the phenomenon of light scattering. Light, as we know, is a electromagnetic wave. It has a magnetic component and also an electric field component. The electric field will cause the electrons in the particles to move. We know the electrons will move in the opposite direction to the direction of the E field. And when the electrons move, it induces the separation of charges within the particles, and this creates a so-called dipole moment. Now, we also know that the electric field in the EM wave is oscillating, meaning the direction as well as the strength of the E field is changing all the time. And therefore, this oscillation of the electric field in turn also causes the dipole moment to oscillate. An oscillating dipole moment can re-radiate light in different directions. And this is the scattered light. The next physical phenomenon to explore is the Brownian motion. When particles are in a liquid, you are surrounded by this tiny, smaller, faster moving solvent molecules. And you are constantly being bombarded by these solvent molecules. And these collisions with the surrounding molecules actually would cause you to move randomly and constantly in the liquid. And this is called the Brownian motion. Now we know particles scatter light. We also know that particles are constantly moving in solution due to this Brownian motion. Let's imagine how moving particles actually scatter light. And this is where the dynamic part of the DLS comes in. Imagine you have these two particles in solution. Imagine these two molecules are being irradiated by a laser beam. They would scatter light, right? So they would emit this electromagnetic wave. Sometimes the waves they emit are in phase with each other. You can see the pattern really overlaps with each other. And this is called constructive interference. In this case, the intensity of the light really adds up. And if you have a detector, they will see a brighter light. However, just remember that these two particles are constantly moving in the solution. So the relative position between these two particles are also changing. At a later time, maybe the EM waves emitted by the two particles are now out of phase with each other meaning they would cancel each out they would cancel each other out and this is called the destructive interference and if you have a detector here you would see actually the light is now dimmer so in overall we see that over time the particles the em waves uh, emitted by the particles could have constructive interference at one time and then destructive interference at another time and this means the light intensity caught by the detector will actually fluctuate over time. This is exactly what is happening in a DLS instrument. So on the top, you see a very simple diagram for the DLS instrument setup. You have a laser beam shining onto the sample solution in the cuvette. And you also have a photo detector positioned at a certain angle. 
And basically, uh, when the laser beam shines on the, the, the particles in the solution, they scatter slight. And then there will be fluctuations in the light intensity that are caught by the photodetectors. And you, you see the output uh, as this fluctuations in light intensity over time. How fast these fluctuations happen over time is actually related to the size of the particles. If the particles are small, they would move faster in the solution, right? And this would cause rapid fluctuations. And on the other hand, if the particles are large, they would move more slowly and therefore they would have slower fluctuations. So once we have measured the, the intensity of the light, how it, how it fluctuates throughout time, we can perform this autocorrelation ana analysis. What this analysis tells us uh, is how similar the intensity of the signal is over a time delay tau. When you have a, a very fastly fluctuating signal, the, the autocorrelation is decaying at a faster rate. Whereas if you have a, a slower fluctuation, the autocorrelation decay at a slower rate. And from this decay rate of the autocorrelation function, you could calculate the diffusion coefficient d. It's basically a physical property that measures how quickly the particles spread out or diffuse due to Brownian motion in the solution. And uh, a faster decay would mean a larger diffusion coefficient. And now we are almost there. We have derived the diffusion coefficient from the autocorrelation function. The next thing we need to do is to make use of this Stokes-Einstein equation. It is basically a, an equation relating the diffusion coefficient with the hydrodynamic radius of the particle. So hydrodynamic radius means the size of the particles in solution. And the, the other properties in this equation are the, the Boltzmann constant, the temperature, as well as the viscosity of the liquid the particles are in. Now it's time to recap the principle of the DLS. We learned about light scattering. We know that when light interacts with particles, the particles would scatter light in different directions. We also know that when particles are in solution, they are moving randomly and constantly. And this is called the Brownian motion. And this Brownian motion would cause the scattered light to interfere with each other. And therefore, you would see a fluctuation in the light intensity detected by the photodetector. And this fluctuation speed is depending on the particle size. We know smaller particles would diffuse faster and therefore have a more rapidly fluctuating light intensity. And then once we have the light intensity, we need to perform a mathematical analysis called autocorrelation. This allows us to derive the, the diffusion coefficient. We also know that there is an equation called the Stokes-Einstein equation relating the diffusion coefficient with the hydrodynamic radius of the particles in the solution. And therefore, we can derive the particle size information from the Stokes-Einstein equation. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate your time. If you find this useful, please do not forget to like, share, or subscribe. If you have any suggestions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.